Hey, how is everybody doing out there tonight? Welcome to uh, another edition of Canadian Islander Fan. Tonight's game, we've got the Cross City hated New York Rangers to play against. So the battle of uh, the Subway Series, the Battle of New York is uh, going to be on for tonight. At least we got fortunate enough that uh, now that we're eliminated, at least we got some interesting games to watch. And, uh, you know, you got to enjoy these last, what is it, six games, uh, six or seven games left. Uh, because before long, we won't have any Islander hockey to watch. And this is going to be our longest summer that we've experienced in a few years. So uh, we're going to go quite a while without Islander hockey. So enjoy what we got here. If you can't get up for this game against Rangers, well, man, I just don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I mean, it's the Rangers. It's an MSG. And uh, it should be a, it should be a great game. At, uh, Rangers are riding a shutout streak right now. And, uh, and, and if, if ever there was a team to extend it against, it's us because we sometimes have some real hard time scoring goals, but because of all those reasons, that'll be the reason why we snap the streak. <laughs> so, <laughs> and besides we're throwing barley at them, so they don't have a chance. That's it. Barley, barley owns them in the MSG. So at least I hope so again tonight. So it'd be nice to, uh, nice to pull off a victory against the Rangers. Uh, I, uh, I'm not sh Yeah, well, I guess the Rangers got a lot on the line here, late first place. So should be interesting. So no need to fire up either team. It should be a good game. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in between the first and second period. After one period of play, New York Rangers lead the New York Islanders three to nothing. And uh, we got Panarin. <laughs> <laughs> we got Panarin. Uh, holy moly. Uh, yeah, uh, I, most people would say we got copped, but because uh, cop has the goals, but those goals don't happen without Panarin on every one of every one of them. Just some fantastic passes by Panarin. Really, Barley didn't have didn't have much of a chance and uh, so much for that <laughs> shutout streak against the Rangers. I thought we were supposed to be good defensively. Holy smokes, what a horror show. I mean, Dobson, oh man, we need, you know, I love, we love your offensive side, but man, you, you got to start tuning into the, the defensive side of the puck and, uh, and Aho, you know, he's got some great offensive instincts, but holy cow, his defense is just horrible. Just horrible. So uh, anyway, I, I said at the start of the game that this game was in Madison Square Gardens, but uh, no, even more embarrassing, it's at UBS tonight. So I feel bad for the Islander fans in there. I guess this game's not over yet. Let's see uh, these guys who uh, preach constantly at the press conferences that they're professionals and that they're going to dig down deep and we'll, we'll see what they got in them for the next two periods here. So uh, show me how professional you are boys by, uh, by actually playing. Uh, okay. So we're missing Beauvillier and Pajot. I don't really, uh, the loss of Bavilia to me really isn't much, but uh, the loss of Pajo definitely hurts us in the face-off circle, and and we just we 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 just work better with Pajo in the lineup. So uh, no excuses here at all. Like I mean, the the Rangers are flying out there, but it's not like they dominated us. They didn't dominate us. We got Panarin three times, and uh, with some help, with some help, like like Dobson, like throwing it into Panarin's knee pads there right at the boards like with within a couple of feet of him you got to know that puck's going to bounce straight back and Panarin's going to have the jump on you like man you got to be smarter than that so so Dobson chucks it into Panarin's pads and uh, and then he, he gets back in time and covers no one so I don't know I don't know. Uh, we need some uh, shoring up on the defense with these younger fellows there, Barry. Uh, it seems like uh, maybe it's time to start holding, uh, you know, some of your demon responsible like you do with Wallstrom and Bellows all the time. So just throwing that out there. And uh, I, I was also wondering if, if Grant Hutton, uh, rumor is Grant Hutton got waived uh, for uh, Bridgeport's playoff push. Uh, since these games don't matter to the Islanders, if, if the Islander organization thinks Aho is so great, I, I got a great idea. Why don't, why don't you send Aho back to Bridgeport 
and bring up sallow. Yeah, like if Salo sucks so bad, then, uh, you know, uh, Ajo and Hutton will help you make the playoffs and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make do with uh, Salo. Sound like a deal, Bear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's horrible defensively. Uh, and I don't know what it is with, like, Josh Bailey and others, but Bailey's got to be one of the worst culprits. When there's a player standing in between you and the guy that you want to pass Buck to, and you're still going to try to force it through his pads like, or pads and skates. And it rarely ever gets through. Like, don't make the pass. If there's a guy right in between you and the guy you're passing to, unless he's got his legs wide open, don't pass it through there. Like, and, and I've seen Bailey do it numerous times. Matt Martin did it a bunch of times. Uh, just a couple of guys is just ugh, the IQ sometimes drives me bananas. Anyway, we're down three nothing after, uh, after one period of play, but the game's not over. That's right. Hold hope uh, Islander fans, maybe we'll come back here. So uh, I'm going to see if uh, these professionals can uh, pull it back and, and get us into this game here. So anyway, talk to you in between the second and third period. After two periods of play, New York Rangers lead the New York Islanders 5-1 to one in what turned out to be a promising start in the second period for about 15 minutes. The Islanders were looking pretty good, had lots of jump in their game, and uh they came out flying right off the bat, uh, grabbing a goal with uh, Brock Nelson potting his 35th of the year on a pa nice pass by uh, Josh Bailey. And uh, things were looking promising. And then we, you know, we settled down for another 12 minutes or, or 15 minutes or so. And pretty much we're taking it to the Rangers and uh, we were looking really good. And then boom, boom, a uh, sign of the, Sign of a playoff team against a non-playoff team tonight, I'm afraid to say. And uh, once again, Panarin is is having a night. So uh, it happens. It happens. What can you do? Uh, you can't get too upset at the Islanders right now because for the last few years, we, we've been absolutely embarrassing the New York Rangers, especially in MSG and that. I mean, Varlamov shutting them out in MSG, Sorokin out playing their superstar goaltender and msg we've been beating them uh they totally knocked them out of the playoffs last year that they didn't even have a chance as the islanders hit them right into submission and back-to-back -back shutout them and that so you know we, we we've had our way for a while so uh you know it is bound to happen it's just odds eventually it's going to happen that things are going to turn the other way and let's be honest here uh the rangers are a pretty good team so uh yeah, they took it to us, 5-1. Uh, I want to uh, just, uh, there's something that's been really bothering me uh, quite a while. Is It's uh, two things that Bush, Butch has been pushing a lot. And one of them is uh, he hates the scrums along the boards and he wants the referees to blow the whistle. And I, right there, I, I, I stop him and I say, no, Butch, you are so wrong. Anybody watching this podcast, if you ever watched hockey in the 70s, uh, especially the 70s, uh, 70s were brutal for it. Uh, they used to freeze the puck all the time. So anytime a team got in trouble, they, the guy just turned around, put his... Uh, put the stick against the boards and, and, and put his body in front of it there. And uh, there wasn't much of a scrum because freezing the boards it was called. And, uh, and so everybody started doing it when they were in trouble all the time. There were so many stoppages in plays when uh, they, when we used to freeze the puck against the boards, it, it, it's, it's a terrible idea, Butch. And the same thing goes for the shooting the one over the glass and that, yeah, you know what? I, I'm not a, Butch is going, well, the ones that uh, you can tell where they're not. No, there's nothing, uh, nothing to be there. It's not a discretion call. If it goes over, it's a penalty. And uh, it's the only way to do it. You can't have it as a discretion call and you, you can't not, have that penalty in the game or they will do it over and over and over and over again so uh you know but i tell you man sometimes you're thinking is way way off here anyway uh 
trying to think of some positive. Okay, here's a positive. The kid line out there. I like what I'm seeing from the kid line out there tonight with Wallstrom, Bellows, and uh, and Koibla. They're out there hustling. They're out there hitting. They're out there giving a hundred percent effort. And uh, really like what I've seen from them tonight. All three of them. They they played really well. So uh, good job for the for the kids. And uh, well, let's try to make it through this next period, shall we? We'll talk to you at the end of the game. The New York Islanders fall to the crosstown rival New York Rangers 6-3 to three tonight in uh, what might be described as a bit of a deceiving game. The score doesn't really indicate how the game was, but, uh, you know, uh, the Rangers dominated us in this one. Well, they didn't dominate us. That's, that's the whole point of the whole thing. They just capitalized on all their, all their chances. And, uh, I kind of said it in the first period, we, we got Panarin tonight with, uh, a guy four assists and, uh, he made it happen. So, uh, other than that first period, we looked pretty good. And I kind of thought that we dominated, well, not dominated, but I thought we had, uh, the majority of the play in the game. And I thought we were actually, for the majority of the game, the better team, but they capitalized on all their chances. I, you know, Varley was kind of left hung out to dry. So I don't really blame him so much. Once again, Panarin and it's, it's real and a typical Kreider power play goal. You know, you, you make the save, he probably could have left a better rebound than, than that one there. But other than that, uh, it wasn't too bad. I will say one thing. The one thing I've always asked for this team, I've always said, I as long as I see the effort, I will I will be okay with it. And uh, I know I've been kind of harping on these guys, w- checking up on their professionalism because they're always talking about how professional they are and, and they're going to play to the bitter end. Well, tonight they did. And it, it was great to see. It, I mean, right to the very final, well, up to the last 10 seconds, and then nobody tried for 10 seconds. Uh, but right basically up to the bitter end, they, they gave it everything they had, and they made a good push. And it, it was fun to watch. It was, a, it was a good high-flying game out there. And uh, it, so for us, we, 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 we got a little bit, you know, excited again at the start of the period. Brock Nelson, once again, scoring his 36th goal of the season now. Uh, obviously, every goal that Brock scores is a, uh, another milestone, but it, it was a beauty little power play goal and some really quick, quick passing. It actually almost took Brock off guard. Uh, Barzell got that puck to him so quickly. And uh, Brock regained his composure and and put her through the wickets in the five hole there. So really nice power play goal. I will say one thing going into next year. This is the first time and I can remember I it's been so long that I actually think next year we're going to have really good power play. And I haven't been that optimistic about our power play in a long time. But this year they took huge strides. And I think next year will be even that much better. So uh, Nelson scored from Barzell and Dobson. But it was uh, uh, as much as we pushed and everything, we still gave up uh, uh, a goal to the Rangers, a uh, little past the halfway mark. And it was Ryan Reese uh, scoring to make it 6 2, which you would have thought really would have put the Islanders right out of it. But they promptly came right back and scored a goal. Josh Bailey from Dobson and Chera. And, uh, uh, you know, here's Dobson, another two point night. And what, what? Oh man, he has such great vision. He really does. And we, we've got a real gem there in Dobson. Now he just has to learn how to play defense. And then we're going to be rocking and rolling after that. So hopefully uh, he takes some big strides in the de- uh, defensive side of the puck next year because he has all the tools for the offensive side. Anyway, uh, uh, like I said, I was quite pleased with the honors with the effort they put in right till the end. Uh, it was a shame that we fell six to three. Uh, to the Rangers, but you know, we were due one. We've, we've done really well against the Rangers in the last few years. So uh, I can live with that. It was a fairly entertaining game. uh, I thought, and uh, like I said, the score to me is just absolutely deceiving is just the, I mean, they only had what 23, 24 shots. And, but the, the six goals were all prime prime, like great goals. And, and uh 
you know, so we got Panarin. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so let's talk about the players a bit. Uh, Zach Parise, once again, his typical day and putting in his effort, but coming a little bit concerning on the, uh, on the Barzell line is the plus minuses lately. Uh, another minus three for, for both Zach and, and Barzell tonight. So that's not, that's not good. That's not good. Like I, I, I like the chemistry of the guys, but they, they can't be giving up that many goals now. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it was just Panarin against the Barzell line tonight. So, uh, and I guess that line got Panarin too. So, uh, what can you say? <laughs> it's pretty hard uh, to say anything about that. But once again, the effort was there for Parise. Uh, fairly good game for Josh Bailey. I was actually shocked that he shot the puck there. I thought he was going to try to pass it to Lee in, in the front there. But nice shot by him and uh, on his goal. And I really thought that uh, I really liked uh, the way Dobson and, and Chara moved the puck around. Like Chara is doing every everything he can to get that puck to Dobson as quick as possible as he can. And uh, that just, that's his main mission is to get that puck to Dobby and let Dobby take over. And, and it's working out pretty good. So uh, yeah. So uh, Bailey, a uh, pretty good game for him uh, for sure. And uh, Barzell already talked about the uh, minus three. So that's gotta be uh, put to an end to pretty soon. Well, not pretty soon. It, it needs to be addressed next year. We need to be a little tighter on that line. Like I said, I think they got chemistry and whatnot. So we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens next year. Just be a little more defensively responsible, but they're getting some tough matchups too. So, uh, there is that Matt Martin had a pretty good game tonight. One of his better games than he's had in a while. Uh, but he just was not laying the body enough. Uh, and I kind of think it was mostly because he, he's getting slow and he can't get to them soon enough to, to lay the body on. So uh, I'm sure he wants to lay the body on him. He just can't get there in time. Uh, Kiefer Bellows, I really, really liked the kid line tonight. They, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've liked Bellows and Wallstrom playing together right from the get go. I just always thought that it should have been Barzell in the middle of the, of the two of them and see what happens. Yeah. The Wallstrom on with Barzell on the first line wasn't really working that great, but I do notice that, uh, Kiefer and Ollie, they've got some good chemistry together and, and that's uh, unusual for a right and left winger. Usually the chemistry comes between a centerman and one of the wingers and uh, to develop a chemistry like that is, is pretty good. So uh, I, I sure would like to see just Pajo thrown in between Wallstrom and Bellows and let him ride. <laughs> and I and I think that would be a great way to go. Uh, Kiefer, great shot, laying the body on everybody. Ripped one off the post tonight. Uh, Kyle Palmieri, what is he trying to set a record for most goals scored that are called back this year? <laughs> Poor Kyle, man. He'd have what three, four more goals this year? Well, four, three for sure, four maybe. <laughs> I had to laugh. Alan Hahn was like uh, trying to trying to create white ice there and, and, and he eventually talked butch into seeing a little sliver of white ice for me that was a no goal and uh that i i thought it was kind of funny when butch goes yeah i think i can see it now <laughs> from this angle <laughs> yeah i i found that quite comical uh but you should have held to your guns and said it wasn't a goal because uh I don't think there was anything there conclusive that could say that that was a goal. So uh, ironically, it didn't really matter much because we scored shortly right after anyway. So uh, yeah, Oliver Walsam, like I said, with Kiefer, I thought him and Kiefer were getting some great confidence or uh, chemistry together. And I really liked their game tonight. Uh, I thought even with Koivalu, Koivala, and I know we'll talk about him when I get to him, but uh yeah, I, I like the energy from that kid line tonight. All three of them were were feeding off each other. And it, it was great to see. Like you, you could see the hunger from all three of them. Koivla has never scored a goal and and they're just hungry. The the three of them together are just hungry. And and it creates a good line. Uh Anders Lee, we 
I, I kind of thought he might have got an assist on that second goal, but I guess it didn't. But he had part to do with it. And uh, I guess Anders is doing the little things in front of the net. So we're just not getting the points or anything out of him right now. So uh, it doesn't seem quite as engaged along the walls as, as he normally is. But, uh, you know, like I said, Brock and Anders carried us for a month. And now Brock's back to carrying us again and Anders just a step behind in that in that coming back to help us out uh, it it you know it's it's just a little bit of a slump no big deal really uh Brock Nelson what can you say about Brock number 35 36 so uh, that's a great season uh, it would be amazing if you could get to 40 uh that's four goals in the next five games he'll need so uh i think as a team we should be putting brock in every situation possible to get him that that 40 it's it's something to play for anyway uh ross johnson wow uh, that play between Matt Martin and Ross Johnson, where Ross Johnson one time, I've said off uh, more than once about Ross. Ross is not your typical goon. Ross can, uh, Ross can, can, has got some talent. Ross can, you know, that, that was not an easy play and he got it off quick. And then Butch is screaming and hollering about, Oh, you gotta put that up top, dude. You <laughs> Butch. <laughs> when you're one timing from your offside and that you, you know you're just trying to get the the puck off fast right and yeah if it goes to the top shelf that's great but uh more importantly is getting the the shot off fast so uh i certainly wasn't blaming ross for not putting it in the toy department uh <coughs> excuse me uh Koibla. I thought I actually had a really good game, but I thought he fed off of uh, Bellows and, and Wallstrom. I, I, I thought the three of them were all hungry together. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure what Kobla holds for this organization. I, I, I'm not really sure where he's going to fit in or if he'll ever fit in. I, I guess I just hope he scores a goal before, before it all goes south for him, if it does. But with saying that, he had a really good game tonight. But... Let's see if he can keep that up. But the problem is, is he's not going to get that opportunity. So uh, a lot of guys can excel if they get the opportunity. But if you don't get the opportunity, it can be very hard to perform on four minutes of ice time a night or 11 minutes of ice time a night. It just doesn't cut it. Doesn't cut it. Uh, Sezikas was out there throwing his body around, but not, not near enough for an Islander Ranger game. But I did see his effort level out there, even though uh, it, it it wasn't focused in the right areas, I guess I would be the best way to say it. Uh, Adam Pellick, uh, not his best game, but uh, not bad either. Uh, it was minus one tonight, but like I said, uh, you know, he logs a ton of ice time, gets all the hard matchups. And uh, overall, I love the way Adam's been jumping up into the play this year and everything and trying to make things happen. Andy Green, I can still see the signs of Father Time starting to catch up with Andy here. Um, uh, maybe it's possible he might have one year left in him. The only reason I say he might have one year left in him is if, if we give him a uh, rest here and there and with next season's schedule, it should be more uh, the game's further apart so maybe the extra rest uh, can get Andy through another year but I have to say right now it's not looking real promising so uh Ryan Pollock uh, I thought he had another good game I love the way he uses his body and his size to fend guys off and and you know he's one of the nicest mean guys out there he, he plays with a bite but Nobody ever really seems ticked off at Ryan. So, uh, like I said, one of the nicest mean guys out there. Noah Dobson continues to impress on the offensive side of the puck. Defensively, not so much. You know, one thing I hate about the NHL is, is getting these labels that uh, all of a sudden somebody declares this guy a 200-foot player like they did with Tavares. And all of a sudden he was a great 200-foot player when he wasn't a great 200-foot player. He's still not a great 200-foot player. And But once you get these labels, you keep them. So now Noah all of a sudden got this label that he's really good on the defensive side right now. But he's not. 
He's not. He needs to still improve. But holy smokes, he's young, 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 young. It's going to come. He's going to get bigger. And I'm not worried about it at all. But let's not label him as a great defensive yet because he's that he just isn't. Uh, Ajo, uh, there is no doubt this guy has some offensive flair. No doubt about it. And uh, it's just the defensive side uh, of things. I mean, guy, he reminds me of uh, the style of player like a, a, a Spurgeon. And, but Spurgeon is really good at, at getting his space. He's kind of like Andy Green was in his prime as, as a smaller guy, knowing, you know, uh, Spurgeon knows his defense. And I just don't think Aho does. Uh, I, 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 I'm on a message board uh, called uh, New York Islanders Talk. And one of the discussions going on there now is like everybody agrees that Aho may not be the guy for us on defense, but some people think he should probably be converted to a, to a forward. And, and, and I could see that, but uh, he could be an effective defenseman if he, if he just learned his assignments. So uh, I don't know if Barry can do that with him in the short period of time or not. So we shall see. Uh, Zidane Chara had a pretty good game tonight. His typical mean self and uh, picking himself up an assist. And like I said, he does a great job of getting the puck to Noah as quickly as possible and then let Noah do his thing. So uh, Zidane never tries to overplay the puck or over manhandle it. He, he, he has one thing on his mind. I'm getting that puck to, to Dobson. And, and that's what he does. And it's working out great. So I thought a pretty good game by uh, Dobson. Uh, it's hard to say Barley had a good game tonight, even though it really wasn't that bad. It looks way worse than it was uh, half the ones, more than half. He didn't have a chance on. And uh, he's not the only one who got Panarin out there tonight. A lot of uh, Barzell's line got Panarin tonight. A lot of Islanders got Panarin tonight. So uh, there's no shame in that. Every once in a while, a superstar is going to take it to you. And tonight was the night that Panarin did it. I remember when I went to uh, New York for for uh to see the islanders play and i got in four games my first one i just got off the plane and dom took me straight to msg and says we're going to watch the islanders and rangers and panarin had a five-point night and uh, that was the start to my first uh game watching the islanders on the island and then i got to watch the next three uh in the barn so that was all pretty cool so uh, anyway, that's uh, pretty much all I got for you tonight. Re overall, I wasn't disappointed with the effort. The way we came out kind of sucked, but that happens in hockey all the time to all different teams and and that there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no explaining it. You know, I've, I've been on teams where we've gotten off to slow starts and we're all in the dressing room there and go, okay, tonight's the night. We're not going to get off to a slow start. Right. And sure. Shit. We would, we would get off to a slow start and, and you just shake your head and wonder why. And it was more like you were running around with your chicken with your head cut off because you were, you were bound and determined to make something different happen. And it, and it just backfired. <laughs> the time so uh i was really pleased with the islanders effort tonight even though uh, it was a rotten start so anyway that's all i got for you tonight i want you guys all to take care out there and peace out <laughs>